before we get into the recap, which Fluff will do, because that's her job, um, <laughs> I'm going to add a couple of retcons. Uh, a, we both found, you found two clues last week that I did not mark. One of them is you found a bottle of whiskey in the castle that was not old. The label had not worn, and it was from Bob Stout. Okay. In the log of residence that does not list Brienne, I added as a clue. Okay. So the only thing I added there was the bottle of whiskey to make of what you will. It has yet to be, uh, you've yet to figure out that clue. So. Who has the log? I thought it was Rass. I thought Rasmussen found it. Rasmussen has it, yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you guys didn't have time to go over it yet. Like, nobody went, studied it, or did any, any tests. Wait, who has what? Rass has the, the, the ledger that says that there's no Brianna. Like, there was never a daughter named Brianna. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was thinking about the tome for a second. Um, the other thing you'll notice, I updated the suspicious figure cards. You can move all of them and uh, draw lines if you want. We're going to talk more about that after the session today, though. So, um, But at least now I hope to give you guys some clear picture of, <laughs> of what's going on. That was a joke. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. But while I'm gone, Fluff, could you give us a summary? Sure, let's see. Last episode, um, we all rested at Matilda's. Um, and then with that, uh, we made our way back into town. And we noticed that somebody was burnt in town. Um, we find Lady Brianna, who, who's holding court um, in the manse, like the, the manor. Um, and Rutherford successfully convinces Brianna that he's sorry and gives his hand in marriage. And she asked him to get a priest out of town since there was no priest in town as a way to, uh, to, to show her his loyalty to her. Um, we also found that a rebel was burned in the middle of the town because there was really no one else to burn, but she managed to burn somebody. Um, so uh, a little later, Ramon goes on ahead. And he actually managed to see some uh, some creatures. Uh, meanwhile, we also see uh, ice monsters coming into so town. We, they were described as ogre-sized ice monsters, and there were five of them. Um, we all managed to regroup in the South Field as Ramon manages to uh, wake up some of the people from like their spine to Brianna. Um, and we notice that the ice monsters seem to be looking for something or seem to be on patrol um, and then kind of just roaming around. Um, so that's when we discuss on what to do next. We discuss by probably getting Carla and finding Horseface and then making Horseface take Carla back. We're also thinking of <laughs> maybe kidnapping an old priest or, or just convincing an old priest to come with us. We, um, but then we all decided to instead push that aside for a moment and just go into the Bogan Castle because we figured that Brianna may be hiding something in there um, that might be useful or might give us clue on why she's here or what she is and whatnot. So at the Bogan Castle, we scooby doo it and we find a hidden passage um, and we make our way downwards and we find these large barracks and we actually see different alchemic substances all around some of them look, look really old and in the center there's a shrine like made out of stone slabs and we see a crown there with like white fur in it and Rutherford managed to pick it up and put it on him and we I think Ramon says there's something magical with it but we have no idea what it does um uh Ramon as he's kind of looking around uh, out of game wise, he sees that it kind of all relates to the uh, this little princess and one of them, uh, one of the, and from what I wrote down, it's one of the first mortals to be to fall into one of the abyssal princes, and she's called the Winter Queen. 
and I put in parentheses the mysterious she, and they think that her empire was had ruled around here in these mountains a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> we find some pennies and pour it on a plate because why not? <laughs> And, uh, oh yeah, so Rosewood puts the old evil crown. Ramon sees magic from the stone and also on the crown, but like I said, we don't know what it does. Uh, we start to search upstairs on the castle and we only find a ledger of everybody born in town, deaths, and births. And we notice that there were no noble children um, or that the ones that were mentioned, none of them were named Brianna. There was a daughter apparently in the ledger, but she wasn't given a name and just the extra note that we found a, a bottle of whiskey that's not been used <laughs> yeah that's where we left off good recap thanks mm -hmm. thank you Um, and I believe you are all at Matilda's now, correct? After returning from the castle. Um, there at Matilda's, you were discussing your next plan of action. So let's sort of hear what we've come up with over the last week and uh, take it. So Rasmussen is going to dump out the three pounds of silverware that uh, he filched from the castle. And uh, he's going to point to Ramon and say, I think this is what you needed in order to create your darts. Or maybe not. I mean, I'm here. I just don't know what you want me to say to that. You pointed at me and said that. Well, I mean, if you can't make any use of it, we'll just also, pile it together. Also, sorry, not, not to interrupt, but uh, I was also waiting for the GM to say something, because usually he tells me, oh, yeah, you can make this many darts with this many things or something like that. Oh, uh, yeah, three pounds of silver, the way you were, like, making darts, you could... You could essentially make a uh, a number high enough that that number no longer matters, really. Like, you could probably make, like, even with fuck-ups, like, 50, right? On a good roll, like, 70 on a crit, like, 100, I say. That seems pretty fair, do you think? Sure. Uh, I mean, essentially, you're asking me, hey, do you have a problem with unlimited ammo? What I, I mean, say? No, I hate unlimited ammo. Yeah, essentially it's enough that unless you, like, critically fail, you, even if you critically fail, you're going to get, like, 20 yards, right? Like, even if you really fuck it up. Uh... Sounds good. I guess I say thank you. Which brings us to the next question. How are we going to kill her? <laughs> no fucking clue. Oh yeah, uh, did we get a good look at that ledger? Uh, I remember skimming through it, uh, which you had uh, discussed during the recap, but I guess now that we're at Matilda's, Rasmussen will sit down and, and read through it systematically and see if there's any additional information that uh, that can be gleaned that might be of any use. Oh yeah, did Lord Bogan have a daughter at all? And if so, did that daughter die? Um, well, the log is incomplete with death records because after the castle was essentially sacked, nobody updated it. Um, but he did have a daughter. Um, we'll call her. It's she's listed as Galora. She, um, if if you kind of like take what like the nearest birth was. She was born about three or four, maybe four years before the log ends. Can you type out her name in the chat box, please? Perfect, thanks. 
I guess it would be Galora. What's the range on the magic cool. missile? Vision. So, so... As long as he sees her. We could be standing across the, horizon, the river yes. and you can just start shooting the manor. Yeah, as long as I can see it. Well, we'd have to keep her busy because if she realizes who's hitting at her... He's, he's gonna go after after well, a bone. So what we do Depending. is that you start um, targeting your shots to the beat of a song. And as long as we're all singing at the same beat, we can keep in time. Can you see the manor from the North Fields? Um, you can see it, yeah. Uh, can you make out individual, you can make out individual figures? I mean, you could definitely make out, like, the figure of Lady Brienne as she is. But that's if she leaves the manor, right? Because if she um, stays inside the manor, then, like... Right, right now, you know, she's holding court in the manor. Yeah. We would have to, like, pull her out of there. Do you think she would come out if you just started shooting missiles at the building? Uh, maybe. Did we discuss the possibility of explosives by any chance? I mean, the thing is making them, like, where, how, what, what would be the materials you used to make them? Well, didn't we find, uh, and I, I could be completely misremembering this, but I, I have this vague notion that we had seen barrels of gunpowder at the mines, or am I completely making that up? I don't think so. I don't mm. remember there being barrels of gunpowder at the mines. I don't either, and lead's pretty soft anyway. I don't... I don't have it written in my notes. Yeah, I remember <laughs> we discussed if it, the mine was explosive, which we all decided was not a thing. Okay, okay, that might be it. Yeah, because we were gonna like just put her in the mine and then collapse the the portal. Oh yeah, that's what it was. That's why my mind went to that. All right, fair enough. Okay, so no uh, no explosives then. All right. No. Well, we talked mm -hmm. about setting the manor on fire, but I think we wanted to avoid doing that because we didn't want to burn down your your family home. <laughs> Well, I, mean, I personally don't care that you burned down my family home. My fear is that, like, the fire will spread and then, like, we'll have no means of controlling it. Like, that's my big fear. Like, well, there's, like, two feet of snow. True. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Oh, that's true. Like, we'd have to start the fire inside the manor anyways because on wet wood, it would be hard to start the fire outside of the house. Like, the manor. Like, it wouldn't spread because of all the snow. But it'd have to start inside the manor. Like, if you set that thing on fire, you'd have to set it inside. And even if we're there, there's no way you're going to run away from anything in two feet of snow. It's, it's just not happening. Oh, there's a yeah. civil war going on, right? Yeah. I mean, I could technically set the manor on fire and just, like, Book it on King. Like, book it. You want to set the manor on fire and do what? Like, literally, because I'll have the horse outside, and then, like, you said that there's no way we'd be able to run fast. At least the horse might be able to, maybe? I don't know. Who's faster? Hooves or tentacles? <laughs> Dude, I don't even want to know. See, well, you'd you know, have to set the fire fast enough, though, so that it's hard for her to escape. Because I just imagine her breaking through the manor wall and just being like, fuck it. 
and remember that she gave us a really good chase. So it's not like she can't keep up with a horse. No, yeah, she's fucking fast for no reason. Like I, I have no idea how she's able to move so fast. She's so if there's a civil well. war going on. Well, what's the possibility of us getting our hands on a cannon? <laughs> I don't think it's possible. Crap, we guys forgot about the ice monsters, too. We have to deal with those things, too. So I say again, what's the possibility of us getting our hands on a cannon? <laughs> we have I don't to know. get it up on, like, a boat. I imagine we have to go out of town for a cannon, because I don't think there's a cannon in town. That would be well, amazing. You're right, but we're supposed to be going out of town to get the priest anyway, or at least that was just the cover story. Now I'm yeah. thinking, let's go out of town, get a priest, get a cannon, get an army, get a bomb, get whatever we can, and just drop it all on her at once. <laughs> oh my god. And while we're doing that, Ramon throws silver darts at her. <laughs> if you detect a slight note of desperation in my voice, it's because I am absolutely desperate. I think we all are. We have no idea how to deal with this thing. So I do wonder what her reaction would be to the crown. I bet she would love it. Well, what if it's something like she knows what it does, essentially? She might, I don't know. Because, like, depending on... Like, was she made with the magic? And the crown was already there? Or did she make the crown with her magic? Right? Hmm. Well, Who do you Ramon, think? well, what do you, what can you determine about this crown? I mean, you mentioned in passing that you detected some sort of arcane vibe off of the thing. Are we talking about a uh, Sauron in the One Ring kind of thing? If we unmake the crown, does it kill her? Because I'd be down. Nah, it just, it feels good. It feels good. Okay, say that again less ominously. It feels great. No, I don't know. Okay, snap out of it. We need you here. <laughs> hmm. It makes me feel like a different person. Well, as long as whatever person you are has got his head in the game and try to help come up with a way to kill her, I'm fine with it. Now, who do you think... Oh, wait. Do we know... Do we have a picture of her father? Oh, God. Like I mean, an illustration a... of uh, the old Bogan, the elder Bogan? Yeah, there may have been an illustration, but I don't think you could necessarily like pinpoint, oh, that's who it is, because it's been exposed to the elements for years now, right? So it's... um. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it like you got. I mean, you get. You probably got in through. You're probably like, oh, that's probably what he looked like. You know, just like a kind of like a noble, <laughs> right? Like, you know, defined features, but everything kind of faded. It would be hard to place. Actually, no. Let's do this instead. Um, make somebody who thought about this flashback to there when you're walking. 
looking at portraits and paintings, make an awareness test, make it hard. Uh, Rutherford or Rasmussen or, okay, Rutherford. Uh, Man, almost, almost got that. Well, you rolled a three, so you got it. No, but not a one. If it was a one, that'd be pretty cool. I'm sorry, did my last thing not come through? No. Okay. Um, if you forged a portrait of Brianna, it would look like that. Right? It would look like like her face would match, right? Like it, she clearly has a similar facial features when she was in human her human form. Uh Brianna? Not or not. Yeah, like she looked like she could, would be related to the different portraits we found on the wall. That's what I mean to say. Okay, so you just like, so a person could just infer that was. Yeah, like facial structure kind of looks the same as what the portraits look like. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, if I was Lord Bogan, what would I do? I'd send her to her goddamn room. Hmm. No. What do you think? Well, um, there is a part of me that's starting to wonder whether she isn't simply an anomaly or something that was summoned. There's a part of me that wonders whether the entire Bogan family are these things in disguise. Not that that really matters much at the moment, but it's just something to keep in the back of our mind. Do you want to leave town to go get that priest she talked about? Or do you want to stay and uh, try to find some angle that we haven't thought of yet? Let's say, hypothetically, if we could have anyone here right now, Anyone. Who do you think would be the most useful? An honest to the gods witch hunter? Anyone who knows how to deal with this thing and send it back to whatever black void it came from. It's a shame we killed that. Wait, Sessa Butte wasn't even a witch hunter, right? No, he, he was
If we grab a bunch of livestock, bring them near the manor, uh, set them on fire and have them run in, that might be a distraction. Not sure what that would accomplish, but I'm just spitballing. So what's the plan? Are we going to get a cannon or not? <laughs> well, we're still spitballing. Out of character question. Does Alexandre know about Brianna? And arguably, he doesn't know anything anymore. Well, technically, I don't think he would. He wasn't very an outdoorsy person. I don't see him wandering around into Bogan Castle and talking to an old lady. Except for that one time where he wandered from one city to another on foot. Um, yeah, I think the I think we determined the first time he met her was when he met her. Yeah. So you're saying that they met when they met. That's just I have oh, a really, really, really funny idea. But I had to ask that question, otherwise I would just keep laughing uh, the whole game. Oh, why don't we ask Matilda if she recognized the crown? Um, she can definitely feel it's evil, but it was able to pass really through her wards. Interesting. Um, so she would be like very like you should probably get rid of that. Right? Like <laughs> <laughs> you should probably get rid of that. That's that's probably not a not a good thing. Um. Of course, though, Grippy, any mention of that, that it makes you angry, really. It really does. Um, you know. Angry. Yeah, why? Why should you get rid of your... Yeah. You know, it's, Fuck it's, Matilda. Right. Like, why should you get rid of, rid of it? It's yours. You found it. God, yeah. I'm kind of like a pretty bastard. <laughs> So, uh, she, uh, she's like, why don't we give them the crown to, uh, Brianna? <laughs> you won't give evil. this to her? What, what if it's like, you know, if it's evil, maybe if we fight fire with fire, you know, they, it will, they will just kind of like, it's, would it make her crazier or would it would make or, or would it will like kill her? You know, you don't never know. You never know. It wouldn't do any use besides hurt me. How would it hurt you? It's just a crown. <laughs> because it's my crown. No, it's not. It's just a crown we found. <laughs> it's on my head. <laughs> um, I'm going to have uh, Genevieve try to see if she can take the crown from him. No! <laughs> um... Sure, you can make an opposed coordination test here if you would like to try. Okay, cool. I will try. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> so, Rutherford, you also roll coordination. Um, let's see. So, you failed by four degrees and you passed Genevieve by one. Uh, you go to grab the crown mm -hmm. and uh your fingers burn with cold what? and, you, it, and uh, you kind of get like frostbite a little bit okay do i actually grab it like grab it, like, uh, you, no, it you, you can't get it off okay okay and the, and the longer you touch it the more it hurts okay yeah she, she pulls her hands away and she's like oh, that thing's cold it's so cold and you see her like like lifting out her hands, like like rubbing her fingers. What's wrong with you? It feels fine. Does it? Oh yeah, that thing is definitely evil. <laughs> <laughs> what if we set the roof on fire? Is that a thing? I crit to spell magic on the crown. 
Um, <laughs> what happy this has no effect on summon creatures or rituals. Well, I mean, the crown isn't currently casting a ritual. Nor no, is it a creature, it, it, by definition. It is a creature. Um, it's eating your brain. It is, yeah, kind of. Um, it's also it, its magic is not. It was imbued like ritualist, ritualistically, right? It's a. Mm -hmm. um, it's the effect of a ritual. So. Do I also deal uh, D10 plus one physical peril to? Yeah, to whoever, whoever originally created the crown, you've dealt uh, 1d10 plus 1 physical peril. So you go ahead and roll. Lich a thousand miles away from here is like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> or it's Brianna. <laughs> or it's Brianna. Who knows? Well. Yeah, maybe you just pissed her off. She'd be like, oh, literally, I know what's going quite on. Quite literally, somewhere, someone is rolling in their grave. Unless Brianna's going to come storming up path, like, I'm going to kill you. So, do we want to get a cannon, I guess? So, about the fire thing, if we do that, if we end up doing that, I like I said, I think we'd have to do it from the inside, because I think the snow will just... Wait, are we just moving on? No, I said it, it, if, if we're going to do the fire thing, we'd have to do it from the inside of the house. No, no, I'm talking about this whole crown situation. Are we just moving on? Ignore well, it. I'm fine. Well, I mean, I mean, look, as far as Rasmussen is concerned, he just watched Rutherford and Genevieve bicker over the crown. He couldn't care less about that. Right now, you'll forgive me if I am focused on trying to kill the tentacle princess. Well, I think look. this is more important if one of our own, the small... A uh, cadre of people uh, gathered together to end the uh, threat to this town. One of them is coming ensorcelled to become the Snow King or whatever. Especially the one who's the lord of the village. You gotta oh. imagine what's happening now before what oh. happens later. I completely understand why you would think that, but right now I am less concerned with Rutherford becoming a power mad, tyrannical, and sorcelled lord of the village, and more concerned with taking out the tentacled monstrosity. What or, if he turns on you mid battle because this thing could activate whenever? Well, he's human. I can shoot him in the face if it comes to that, but I don't think it will. You shot one person in the face and then failed to do so a minute later. <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't think you're fully grasping the scope of the fact that you can't run away from a fight. No, no, no. You neglect to take into consideration the fact that I have since purchased both basic ranged and martial ranged. I no longer have to flip the fan. I don't think you've taken into consideration the fact that you haven't regrown your leg. I am keenly aware of my limitations. In 20 days, my knee will be better. You were talking about the leg you still have. I'm talking about the leg you don't. Well, that's never stopped me before. It's not about to stop me now. Well, I mean, assumedly, there was at one point you had both legs, and it did stop you. I'm just saying I'm just... that this is a problem. I'm pointing to Rutherford's head. That's not I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not a problem. I'm just saying he clearly can't take it off his head because it will give, like, freeze my fingers off. But well, put some gloves on and take it off of his head. Just let it take its natural course. <laughs> Look here, Jeb. We don't need another Jeb. How about the fact the clues say that Jeb is still possibly not dead? And now you're wearing a crown that's turning you cold. Do, do we have like um does 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 Matilda have like a pair of um tongs? Yeah, tongs. Yes, exactly. Or we can just throw rocks at his head until one he takes it off, or two it falls off. <laughs> yeah, does he have a pair of tongs? Um, like, sure. Okay, I'm gonna take a pair of like metal tongs. I'm gonna put. Does he have a fire lit? Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gonna set it to the fire. And then I'm going to wait till the metal heats up, and then I'm going to try to take it off the crown. 
<laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. Get that away from I'm, my, I'm, burning, I'm burning some of your hair off, but it's fine. Yeah, um, so, let's, uh, let's, um, <laughs> before we get full player versus player, let's make sure that yeah, we yeah, no, I know. Because that's where we're heading, right? Let's just, like, yeah. all right, let's take a second. Um, I'm going to take it. I'm also going to ask Ramon and, and Rasa to hold him down because she does not want to hurt him. <laughs> Guys, going to have to hold him down. I'm, I'm sorry, are you asking me to hold Rutherford down? You're gonna have to because you, I don't care what you do, you grab him. I'm four three. I am four three and him. sixty-five pounds. Are you asking me okay. to hold Rutherford down? All compromise. All compromise. You can try and pry it off, but no hot metal. You can this face. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. We don't limit. need your face. We just need your hair. I'd be happy to help, except that he can outwalk me. Fine, do you want me to hold him down and then you guys yeah, prime you grab him? him. You grab him. Yeah. You you ask the very Okay. I'll grab him then. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold you still. She doesn't plan <laughs> she'll give the songs to somebody who wants to do it. It's give it to Rat. Literally my build is frail. I'm not the Oh, not to mention what's the what's the injury I currently have? Damn it, I didn't list it in the right spot. Oh shit, no, I think I'm... Damn it, I keep getting Zweihander and uh, Hackmaster mixed up. Hackmaster, I'm also playing a weak-ass character who's thrown out their back or something. Um, hmm, okay. So, Joe, you're pretty much letting them do it, right? I mean... If it's not hot... <laughs> oh no, I did, I pulled muscle. I pulled a muscle in this game, Ramon. Pulled muscle, failed to flip all brawn-based skill checks. Look, we've all seen Adventure Time. We all know what happens when you put the magical crown that turns cold on your head. You go crazy, you turn into a bearded, long-haired white guy was all about princesses. Yeah. Um, what the hell are you talking about? He's talking about uh, the, the what was it, the Winter King or whatever. In, um... I can't no, remember one, I keep calling him Snow King. Ice King. Ice King, yeah. Ice King. <sighs> okay. Um, whoever has the tongs make like a Athletic. So sorry, oh, no. not white guy, blue guy. His white hair. Who's doing this? Who's doing this? Because I'm holding him down, apparently, or or am I doing it? Because because he's okay with this. Go ahead, try it. See okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Oh god. Oh, god. Like normal. oh god. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Do not. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Um, you beat him over the head with the tongs. <laughs> yeah. Suffer uh, 2d10 physical peril. Genevieve. Okay. Um, so you can go ahead and roll your own physical peril. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rutherford, luckily, she was ineffectual in applying the heated tongs to your head, so you escaped. Twelve. So I am... I am... I am moderately wounded, I think? Yes. Uh, Not wounds. um, uh, Peril. Oh, peril, peril. Sorry, my bad. So I, let's see, 12. Uh, I ignore one skill rank. Okay. <laughs> it's too stressful, guys. Well, you, like, it, uh, you like pulled a muscle or something, right? Like, 
Well, not pulling a muscle, but you hurt yourself straining again. Fuck me. So, <laughs> we don't know if that would have worked, essentially, because I failed that roll. Or does it, does it, it prove it wouldn't work? It's obvious you're not getting it off without um, that way. Okay. So, uh, yeah, she sets the tongs down, and she looks at the group. She's like, so, we can't physically take it off of him. That there's... <laughs> She says, rubbing her arms. <laughs> See, I told you, it's just gotta run its course. Oh, God. It's like, You're not a doctor. It's like, it's like a pimple. It's one of the titles well, you do not have. Okay, here's the theory. Here's the theory. If we kill Brianna, would it dispel this item? Or it doesn't matter if she's dead or not. I don't know. She's got to die, though. I'm not marrying that. Do a handstand. <gasps> Rutherford. <laughs> now you're just being ridiculous. Are you saying you can't do a handstand? <clears throat> we we don't do that where I come from. What? Acrobatics? Get on our hands. No. Oh. I have seen you use your hands a, a lot. You cannot claim this. So you're telling me that when you fall over, you just don't get up? Alright, you want me to do a handstand? Fine. I'll do a handstand. How are we doing this? It's, it's your job, though, Jester. You better join me, actually. Sure, I literally cannot fail a handstand. Yeah, Ramon does not. But you, on the other hand, Rutherford, make yourself a hands. See, I literally have a talent for it. No, what what is this? Coordination. Oh wait, I've been forgetting that. Do that. Um, you're there. You go. You do a pretty pretty impressive handstand. Does the crown fall off? No. <laughs> <laughs> What is in mid handstand? I want to kick the crown off his head. You're gonna kick me in the head. Oh my god. Um, sure. Um, roll a d6 fury die. Add your combat bonus. That's how much damage you take, Rutherford, from being kicked in the face. I don't even get a chance to try and aim the kick. I'd say I kick him in the face intentionally. I kick him at the crown. Well, yeah, but unfortunately, the crown's on his head. So you try to kick off the crown. It essentially doesn't budge, so you're just kicking him in the face. <laughs> right? Oh, so even with the force of a foot, it's not going to come off his head? Nope. Okay, well, let me roll this nine damage I'm probably going to do. Yes, it can explode. Yes, you can literally kill him with this. What? Uh, how do you do exploding? Is it uh, uh, exclamation? If, if you roll a six, yeah, if you roll a six, then the oh, next okay. six. One below exploding. All right, so you take eight oh, damage. Can you okay. imagine the scene where we're planning out how to take out Brianna? <laughs> we get it mixed up with the crown shit, and I literally blow your head off my foot. Well, I am uh, grievously wounded. Nobody could figure out what happened. Um, roll 3d6, uh, Ramon. Oh my god. That's a shame. Hey. I was really hoping. Sorry, hey. I haven't thinking about injuries. I just love to see them happen. I don't even care what side they're on. I'm a bad teammate, basically. You guys are like trying to bless me, Jesus. <laughs> oh wait, I got an idea. How far away are we from what's her name? Um, the healer. We're in my house. Oh, cool. So I kick him in the head again, and he passes out, or nearly dies, or whatever. And we take the crown off of his head, and then get her to heal him. So you want to purposely, purposely knock, knock out. Genevieve, you just saw me kick him in the face. What are you asking me right now? <laughs> oh, God. I was going to, like, uh, chime in here and say, if he doesn't want it to come off willingly, 
then I don't think it's going to move. Well, that's why I said if we put him to near death, then his willpower is no longer an equation. It's like the Green Lantern ring, basically, right? No, it's, uh, it's, you don't know what it's like. No, I'm just giving you an example. I'm not asking you. Yeah, I'm saying I understand. That's what I'm no, it, um, not necessarily, no. It's, uh, more like alien. How about that? Does that make sense? So we need to operate on, remember an alien, they did a stomach operation, ripped it right out of her. So what you're saying is you want to cut my head off. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, you want like, to that would be down. like essentially the 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 what's it called? I don't know what it's called because I have no idea uh, what you're going for. Uh, the essentially, the only way you're getting it off is either you could convince him to give it up willingly, or you quite literally kill him. You know. Hey, Rutherford, I'll give you three pounds of silver to take that crown off. I have a bunch of gold in a worthless village. No, you don't, because of the other half of your sentence. The gold is not the village. No, the I'm village. saying the, gold, the village doesn't have the gold. I have my own gold, thank you very much. No, you don't. We both know Yeah, this. I do. I stole a bunch. Cool, thanks for telling me. Okay, so I'm going to... See if I can manipulate Rutherford. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can try to lie to him. <laughs> um, so Genevieve sits in front of Rutherford and she says, Rutherford, if you take that crown off your head, I promise to be your personal dragoon for life. Aren't you that already? No. <laughs> she <laughs> never swore an oath of fealty to you, but mm -hmm. this is something you might actually want to consider because there's a great deal of value. <laughs> so many choices. What do I do? How about this? If you agree to take off the crown, not only will Genevieve be your personal dragoon, but I swear I won't scheme to take the village from you. Let's see, he never promised okay. that. You he promise was... to be my personal dragoon. Till you die. I mean, I promise. <laughs> okay, here you go. Take the <laughs> crown, <laughs> and I oh. throw it in the fire. <laughs> yeah, his. Um... What's great about that, though, is that uh, she's Rutherford pretty... separate five corruption. She's a pretty shitty mm -hmm. dragoon when you get down to it. <laughs> I mean, no great offense to you, uh, Fluff, but Genevieve passes out, like, all the goddamn time. <laughs> but I have protected people. Come to think of it, you just... I mean, the argument there is, but I am a dragoon. You just assisted this goblin in kicking me in the face. Yeah, good times. I I didn't know. Um, well, per well, back then, when he did kiss kick you in the face, I was not your personal dragoon. So the the crown hits the uh, fire and uh, disintegrates. Wow. I mean, something I would care about if I was, like, secretly trying to get the direct crown or something, but fuck that thing. So Genevieve, now? yes, I'm so happy. And she pats uh, Rutherford on the shoulder and she's like, it was for your own good. Guess we gotta plan another wedding. <laughs> okay. Um. At some 
point during this day, um, you hear a familiar voice outside of the cabin, and it is uh, that of Marsha. Uh, Marsha Ziegenhelt, and she is calling Matilda to audience at the court of Lady Brienne. Uh oh. Wait, Marsha will see all the footprints here. And we'll see it coming from, but we have to get Marsha. Is she that smart? I don't she know. Calls again. All right, I'll, I'll, I'm going to see if I can rush out and grab Marsha. Um, attempting her to, she is standing outside the ward. Oh, she's uh, standing she outside the ward? Yeah. She won't resist any attempt to grab her and pull her in, but you'd be pulling her through the ward. So, okay. So if you can, I, that, can can I grab her and not put her through the ward? I'm just gonna just grab her. Oh yeah, you can just like tackle her to the ground. She's not even yeah. offering resistance. Yes, I do that. <laughs> oh, wait, she's in sore soul too, isn't she? Well, Ramon can dispel her, right? Yeah, that's a good idea. See what she knows. Maybe she could tell us about Jeb. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. I mean, you have her. You you knock her. Okay. So Ramon, can you please like pull pull the. Like, can you dispel her, please? Uh, Theta, are you there? Yeah, what's, what's up? I didn't hear my name. What was that? So, what, did you need something, or? To, to oh, dispel, um, spell, um, yeah, yeah, yeah Marsha. Dispel Marsha? I thought, I thought Marsha was fine. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm kind of dealing with something on the side, so I've been oh, no waiting problem. to, uh, no, no, it's not a problem, it's just... I, I'm doing that thing where, like, you're in a foreign country and you're listening for your name. So, <laughs> I have yeah, one um, year open uh, for the game. Hold on, I'll cast it real quick. Yeah, Marsha showed up to the house to request the presence of... Um... Right, I heard that Marsha was here, but I didn't realize that she was uh, ensorcelled or anything. So I thought you guys were having a conversation. Mm -mm. No. She, then you, you guys went quiet, and I'm like, well, I didn't hear my name or anything, so I guess it's still good. Um, yeah, she quickly loses it before uh, massively accusing you of being a witch, Genevieve. And everyone uh, around. She, she blinks and she says, uh, all right, they never remember about what happens to him before the spell hits. Marsha, focus. <laughs> okay. She's like, <laughs> I'll focus when you get your damn weight off me, girl. Maybe. Um, there is a big... Don't have to worry about any witches anymore because we have a big monster in town. What's the last thing you remember, Marsha? Um, make a persuasion check. Okay, cool. If somebody has that skill, they can assist you. Um, not Someone. Persuasion. Someone assists, please. 